G'day cocktail lovers. I've come up with another barrel aging project. So obviously by the time you see this, this me speaking will be three or four weeks in the past. But there's a few stages to this as well, not just chucking something in a barrel. This was all inspired by a bottle I saw when I was out shopping. It's called the, it was an orange whiskey liqueur. Never heard of that before. I thought that sounds interesting. And I almost bought it and then I thought I could make something like that. I really liked the liqueurs I made with both whiskey and rum before. They're using my spiced apple sugar syrup as a base. I'm going, I'm going to do that. I'll include some orange. So this took a couple of phases. The first was creating the base syrup. Relatively straightforward, if a bit of messing around, chop up an apple, slice it nice and thin, and peel about four oranges, put all of that into a bowl, and then cover it in twice its weight in brown sugar. I'm using a dark brown sugar. You could use the sugar of your choice. It actually doesn't have to be brown. It's just, I love the really deep molasses flavors that come through when I do this. After about 24 hours, the sugar leaches moisture out of the apple slices and oil out of the orange peel and is almost completely liquefied. This is the process known as magic. Actually, I'm pretty sure it has another name as well, but I always appreciate how it does that. So that's my base syrup, but I want this to be spiced. Next, we toast up some cooking spices. Use what you have or what you like. I put in some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some cloves and some star anise and I just toasted them for a while. Didn't want to burn them, but really wanted to get those flavors coming out. Then I added syrup with the apple slices and orange peel still in there. And then I let that simmer for like 15 or 20 minutes. I wanted the flavors to really surge through, get a little bit of evaporation. This is going to be quite a rich syrup. I let the syrup cool, then fine strained it, and I have this lovely rich syrup with all those cooking spice flavors, the molasses from the sugar, and light notes from the apple and orange as well. Now I need the booze component. Previously I've made this with whiskey and I've made it with rum. I thought it might be fun to mix it up and make it with both whiskey and rum and see how that comes out. I'll be using a litre of spirit and adding 250 mils of the syrup to that. And I've decided from my collection that it's going to be mostly this Cape Byron single malt. This is actually the first whiskey produced by this distillery. It's quite nice. And this Bundaberg rum. It's one of the ones they use, the blenders edition. So they were slightly more special than their bog standard one. Uh, but besides these two, I'm going to kick things up a notch with some cask strength whiskey. This is another Australian whiskey. This is actually 64% ABV. They are not mucking around. I'm gonna put just 100 mils of this in. Yeah, just to put a bit of bite in there and uh, see how this all comes together. So after mixing a litre of spirits and 250 mils of the syrup, that's my complete concoction and that goes into a barrel where it will stay for two or three weeks. I will probably start tasting it at the two week mark to see how it's going and in the name of science I will be keeping a bit aside that isn't going into the barrel because at the end of the day I want to do a side by side taste comparison and decide if it was worth doing the barrel aging. But that's somewhere in the region of three or four weeks in the future. I'm doing a two week taste test of my barrel aging liqueur. I'd always plan to leave it for at least three or four weeks, but I thought the two week mark will give it a taste test. So here we have uh, the unaged or unbarrel aged uh, liqueur. And that's really good. And for a comparison, uh, this has been in the barrel for two weeks. Mmm that is starting to mellow all those flavors. Oh, it's staying in there though. I'm not going to decant it yet. I'll try it again in another week. Four weeks later, we have one version of the liqueur that I kept in a glass bottle, didn't barrel age it, and the version that has been barrel aged. There isn't a significant difference between them visually. The barrel aged one's picked up a little bit color. It's a little bit darker. You know, I actually considered redoing the intro to this because I looked back on it today it's like oh that's weird it's in the old setup that now feels weird to me but the contrast in one video I think is interesting so I kept the original intro but now for the taste test of the liqueurs oh man mmm it's really nice I'm trying to think am I fooling myself because the big thing I wanted was to be able to taste the orange because I hadn't used orange before. And I definitely feel like I can taste the orange, which would be a win. 
that's an exceptional drink. I really like making this style of liqueur, but barrel aged, how different is that? Oh, it's got a, a deeper, smoother taste. Actually, I feel like it's taken the edge off the orange and this tastes a little bit sweeter. I'm going to do another comparison. Yeah, I think I'm right. I think the orange taste is sharper in the version that wasn't aged in a barrel. They're both extremely good. The orange is still here in this, but it's smoothed out a little and the sweetness has come a little bit more to the fore. I have success with my barrel aged liqueur. Now I think I need to make a cocktail with it. When considering what sort of cocktail to make with this, I thought, well, what cocktails use uh, whiskey or rum based liqueur? Grand Buey is the most popular, best known whiskey based liqueur. And of course, the most famous Grand Buey cocktail is probably the Rusty Nail. And I saw a lot of variations of the Rusty Nail out there. I thought I'm going to do that. And I found one on the Diffords Guide that used uh, some elements that were influenced by a Sazerac. He called it a Cajun nail. And I'm going to use that as my starting point, but I'll be using local products. I was going to call it an Aussie nail, but have the angry nail coming up. This will have a split of whiskey and the liqueur I've made as the base. And because the liqueur is quite sweet, I thought I want something that's going to stand out against that. This is a limited whiskey made by the Archie Rose Distillery. It's a rye whiskey, and it's been finished in a cask that had a bitter wine called Maiden Eye Nocturne. So it's not actually a bitter uh, rye, but there is some really different taste elements in it that I think will contrast really nicely with the liqueur. So these are gonna be the key elements, and this is how I'm going to make the Angry Nail. One of the Sazerac elements I'm borrowing is an absinthe rinse. So I'm using my very bright blue absinthe. I had some wankers on my channel and said, it's not real absinthe, because they didn't know what it was. And I was like, okay, A, you're Italian. Absinthe's not Italian. Stay in your goddamn lane. Uh, B, this is Spanish. It was one of two areas in the world that kept making absinthe when it was illegal in most of the world. So they know what they're doing. B, yes, that is obviously a really fake color. It's the gimmick this maker uses. They color code the strengths of their absinthe. The actual ingredients are very traditional absinthe. The color, not so much, but that's their thing. And I think I insulted these people enough. They will never come back. I am going to do just the splash of absinthe in my glass. This is how I do an absinthe rinse. I've got ice in the glass. I'm going to splash some absinthe over it and I'll set that aside. And before I pour the rest of my drink in, I will drain out the absinthe, but keep it, not throw it down the sink. That'll be like a chaser for me. To make the angry nail in our mixing glass, we are going to put one and a half ounces or 45 mils of our whiskey. Add to that one and a half ounces or 45 mils of our liqueur, and then two dashes of Angostura bitters and two dashes of Peshaw's bitters. We add ice to our glass and stir that for about 25 to 30 seconds because this is very boozy, so a bit of dilution will be good and also want it nice and cold. After I strain the absinthe out of the rocks glass, so there's just a rinse in there, I pour the cocktail in there and add my favorite garnishes, some orange peel and a maraschino cherry on a skewer. I have my absinthe chaser, but I'm gonna try the angry nail. Ooh, ooh yeah, that's a winner. Because the liqueur is very sweet. If you're in the mood for sweet, that's good. But uh, that whiskey that has a somewhat bold flavor is really striking uh, an opposing sort of balance to the sweetness of the liqueur. And good old absinthe, there's only a rinse in there, but you can still taste it. Okay, I'm going to keep exploring what I can do with this liqueur, but this is a good start. Uh, I hope that it gave you some ideas. Maybe you could try something at home. Uh, either way, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, I will say cheers.